Good morning, day seven of our ride through Idaho. Uh, yesterday we made it to Elk City, Idaho, and we are staying right in this campground here behind me. It's a nice setup. Uh, the showers are available and uh, fire pits and firewood, and it's pretty clean. We woke up at seven o'clock and right now it's almost eight, so we just finished uh, eating the breakfast. Yesterday, well, uh, probably that happened earlier, but uh, on my Honda Africa Twin, I broke the windscreen support. The whole thing cracked and uh, the whole thing was vibrating since I have all the stuff mounted on the bike here. So many of you are using this uh, gadget from Camel, uh, the windscreen support, and it snapped right on the bottom there. I was fortunate enough to find somebody locally here to get it welded and uh, take it all apart uh, after I pulled in here and get it all going again so it's uh, good as new probably even better the way the guy welded it here it's a little bit of a challenge also because there's only one man that's uh, fixing everything in this little towns so he's the handy guy for the whole town and uh, he was working on planes and he's the one that had a um, aluminum welding machine so that's the story of yesterday and a few days uh, probably that snapped while i was riding uh, on a bdr sections uh, here like uh, on those rocky sections on a previous video and one side snapped and then yesterday the other one when we were riding through some potholes in the road and the whole thing start, started vibrating. So we were able to do some laundry last night as well. Well, I did mine today, but the boys did it yesterday, flipping the tents out so to get the morning dew of the top of the tents so it's a that's the campground riders rest Elk City Idaho campground there's a few small restaurants or well, not few two I would say and a coffee shop right on the other side and there's the Elk City Hotel that's uh, most of the BDR lighter riders are pulling it in uh, for a night. I'm not sure why they call that Elk City. When we were riding here, we would expect a little bit more, but uh, I wouldn't call that a city. There's just a few houses, small little town, but uh, people are really nice and friendly here and very helpful. Yesterday, when you ask one person, they know each other and they can, they can direct you to the different locations. Uh, if you need any service, they have even a doctor on site here too, so if you ever need that. So there's a little bit more of that town. And Elk Summit Cafe. Bogdan couldn't start his motorcycle this morning, and we decided to take the valve covers off and have a closer look finding out that the valve clearances are of a spec. So we needed help to get it to the dealership to get it checked. The departure was postponed till 2 p.m. We were lucky that there was a big hill just outside of the campground and that was our chance to get the bike started and it actually worked. So we're finally rolling again and it is uh, 2 o'clock p.m. So we spent all morning working on Bogdan's BMW. Uh, we figured uh, to, to look for a closest dealership uh, because the issue is pretty much uh, quite serious uh, with the valve. So we want to travel the, sort, the shortest distance possible. And we will try to go to Clarkson uh, 
because that's the closest BMW dealer located here in Idaho from Elk City and uh, we will give them a call as soon as we get a uh, coverage on the cell phone because uh, right here there's like no coverage on a cell phone network so we were supposed to travel for another five days uh, out here going further south but that will be out of the question now uh, too many issues uh, on this trip happen uh, Bogdan also fell off uh, on a BDR and uh, there's uh, minor damage on the body and crash bars and all that stuff, lights and uh, myself as you watched previous videos uh, the radiator cooling fan uh, is decommissioned on one side so I'm just running on one fan but uh, the funny thing is that uh, when I had a closer look on the BMW R1200 uh, they also have only one cooling fan and uh, the other one apparently is optional uh, from the dealership as an accessory I'm, I'm running so far on uh, the bike is fine on one cooling fan we are glad that the problem didn't happen while we were in the middle of nowhere on a BDR because uh, that would be way way more challenging than here uh, we were able to take off the covers and check the valves and everything right on the campground uh, since we have all the tools uh, Robert and Bogdan they have the tools for their bikes I have the separate tools for my bike because they're different BMWs are mostly Torx so it's a totally different set of uh, tools and at the same time I was able to fix that uh, screen support on my bike uh, thanks Camo uh, for this, uh, uh, the workmanship on that bottom part is quite ridiculous, they bent the aluminum instead of uh, have a weld in the middle to support it and uh, once you are on the bumps the, the whole thing snaps and in my case it just only came off, uh, the windshield was wobbling back and forth and I didn't know what was going on for quite some time because only one arm I think was broken and uh, on this BDR just a couple of days ago as we finished uh, Lolo Pass the whole thing was just uh, loose kind of unfortunate uh, that uh, we couldn't do what we wanted to do but at the same time uh, let's hope it's gonna be a good ending out of it we still have fun riding back uh, we have uh, probably close to seven eight hundred kilometers back to Alberta and we might take a different route uh, but most likely we will take a different route than uh, what we came from so stay with me on the channel for the next couple day, uh, days or uh, for you guys it's gonna be a couple of weeks because I release the video once every week uh, right here in Elk City and the uh, previous uh, town in the Lola Hot Springs uh, the weather is actually quite drastic uh, for, for us because um, during the day or even right now it's uh, like the time that we have right now is like uh, two, 2 o'clock and the temperature is already at 30 degrees and at night it's actually quite cool so now the next time uh, to, tonight when I go to sleep I'm gonna have to pull out a thicker liner for my uh, for my sleeping bag I have uh, two different liners uh, if you watch my video uh, what I take uh, on my uh, motorcycle trips uh, one is uh, thinner for warmer weather just to protect the sleeping bag uh, so you don't have to wash it that often it's much easier to wash the liner and then uh, the other liner it's a much thicker so that adds additional 10 degrees of warmth uh, in your sleeping bag and I hate taking the big sleeping bag especially when I'm going south because it's uh, so bulky but I do have it sometimes when I travel uh, up north in Canada then I'm using that one more often but here I prefer to have room for other stuff one thing to keep in mind uh, if you are traveling on Idaho State Highway 14 the one that we're on uh, as you see approaching here there's a lot of small potholes and big potholes so you have to be careful so don't push the speed I have 
to say this trip was uh, one of the most uh, demanding trips for us. There's usually something happened on every trip or every adventure, but this one here there was uh, a little bit too much. If it's not one bike, then there's yeah, no, no, another bike is like <laughs> on and off something happening. But the main thing is that uh, we're all in one piece, and that's uh, that's where that's the most important part. So we almost finished four sections of the Idaho VDR. That was uh, a lot of fun, but very risky. It takes uh, it takes quite a bit on some sections uh, of that BDR to get through. And on the big bikes, uh, like the BMW, South Africa Twin in this case, I, we, we see more a lot of people with smaller bikes, but uh, uh, probably the bigger bikes are taking the less challenging routes and we push the bikes to the limits on those big rocks and uh, especially the lot of us that was uh, just insane Say the American people are very, very helpful in so many situations on this trip. Uh, people were trying to help us out if uh, we asked uh, something or they offered, uh, uh, even like uh, on top of the Lolo Pass there, there was uh, two guys that offered a gas for us, uh, just just in case so we can make it down because we didn't know what, uh, what's in front of us. And here, like uh, they direct you to the uh, person that can if they can help you they will direct you to another person uh, that was uh, able to to help us out and uh, fix the problem that we have One hour later and the scenery in Idaho is changing. Looks more like a prairie. Our next destination is Clarkston. And again, 40 minutes later, back into the mountains. Oh, there's a river. Wow, the temperature is climbing. I got 36 on the gauge right now. 36 Celsius. That's a huge factory. What the hell do they make here? It almost looks like it's a refinery or something. We're just crossing Stake River, Lewistown. 
that's a big ass river and actually it's a really nice area I like it Entering city of Clarkston and we Washington State the sign right here. We just enter Washington. That was interesting. It's like a twin city. That's what it is. One in Washington, one in Idaho. Africa twins don't stop at Starbucks coffee. Africa twin twin goes on BDR. Oh, you're going to the back? Oh, we made it to the dealership. Hopefully they will take care of us. We're walking by foot to Idaho from uh, Washington. <laughs> But let's go from the top first. So that, that's not only crossing a different uh, state line, it's also crossing a different city. Because that's a Livingstone, and that's a Clarkstone on the other side behind us. 